welcome back to the channel. Today we're playing Pecan Grove West in Sherman, Texas. This is a cool course. Uh, it's got an old school kiosk with all the hole information, which is super useful, but UDISC has it all. It's got 18 holes, par 65, 7,900 feet. We're starting off hole one here, par four, 444, three, 443 feet. Basically, you need to get into this tree line and start working right. I'm trying to turn over here. I think that's a bullet. Hit the other tree I needed to miss. Um, but yeah, so there's a little dry <laughs> creek bed down there. I have played it with a bunch of water in that creek before, but today it's dry. Forehand is definitely the play, but fresh out of the car, forehand is not my friend. And there's a part four, so really all you need to do is get into position in the bottom of that creek and then you'll be able to pitch up onto the flat or attack okay. you can attack the basket from down there oh, obviously it's easier <laughs> if you clear this whole low spot but I think that was the one we're doing three on one because it's an hour and 40 minute drive. Yeah, so here's where one of my shots ended up. I'm really happy with this, other than like having to do a standstill. But that's the gap. I didn't hear anything, which kind of concerned me, because there is, this creek channel does go up next to the green. So yeah, this is Justin's second lie, so throwing three. And that's edge of circle. And this is why I didn't hear anything, is... I almost made it all the way down another creek, which would have been bad. I'm stoked to have, like, any sort of look here for a birdie. But, I mean, if you fly the green on this, you could be looking at a 60-foot putt that's 40-foot uphill. On to hole two, par three, 228 feet. We've got a left to right wind here, so I'm just going to go putter turnover. Give it some height and let the wind do all the work. That'll play Ended up well. going past the basket. Putting back at it. Justin's going forehand here with a bobcat. Threaded it. We still have a look. Yeah, that left to right kind of made him dig down a little faster. And the basket's mixed in with this line of trees, so like if I was a little bit further to the right, I wouldn't have had a look at it at all. Oh, you're but with me. Sailed it, and now I have about the same putt coming back uphill, so watch out for that. Hole three, par three, 352 feet. Kind of just a stock hyzer. You need distance, but you also need to get it left. So I've got this new DD3 that doesn't like to go to flat for me. Yeah, that's better. It's low enough you'll probably skip too. Pinned it. In this basket, you'd have to be a little careful. It is on a slight rise, so roll away potentials there. But pretty straightforward hole. Hole four, par four, 501 feet. We've got 
throwing through the field. And down into some woods here. You got a couple of gaps you gotta hit in the fairway, but pretty much you just wanna punch through the tree line. And then I feel like your second shot, almost no matter what, is a little bit poke and pray. Unless you lay up short of the woods and then throw like a spike hyzer over all the trees, because they're not massive trees. Justin's shot is definitely better being straighter. He's got a bunch of trees to work with, but... I feel like he had some good options. Whereas I decided to try a forehand roller. And I didn't put it in enough cut, and it just made its happy little way all the way over to the right. <laughs> yeah, Justin made it, you know, 30 feet from the basket after his second, and I'm over here having to do a standstill. I'm actually on the next fairway. It's really bad. And you have kind of a fast green with the slope into that creek channel behind that we're standing on the edge of. Hole 5, par 4, 515 feet. You got about 200 feet up to the edge of the woods. Nice fairway to shoot out of. And then you start breaking right. So Justin's going to free tail. Ducks a little early, but makes it up and out. I'm pulling this fission wave today, so I'm ripping on that. Yes! Barely made it out, so I'm going Bobcat. Oof. Nice. I thought that was going to skip in. And I'm really not sure what all these painted blinds are. You may have noticed them on hole three. I'm not sure if there's like a little league situation or kickball league that happens out here. Or if it's OB for a tournament. I really have no idea. So if you know, put it in the comments. On to hole six, almost 500 feet. We're doubly sure of it. Going to that fission wave again. And I hit it just right. Justin throwing his pitter patter, pitter patter enigma. I feel like the wind just switched too. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Nice look from over here. Water break. <laughs> Justin almost died. And this is where my tee shot ended up. got the eagle on hole seven par three 504 feet I'm going wave again and I really have no idea where it went it just like <laughs> kept going, right going I don't know how far right it on needed. any end of the Step woods one. this is a hard par three I mean par's kind of irrelevant anyways but par three on this seems a little brutal. Maybe there's a local route that we didn't see through the wall of trees. Um, but it balances out. There's a couple of soft holes out here too. I got some sort of weird mystery kick to the left, which actually almost put me back in the fairway. I missed a shot because I know I didn't three that because I remember being kind of irritated that it's a three, so we missed a shot somewhere. Anyways, 
Hole 8, par 4, 432 feet. It looks like there's crisscrossing fairways on U-Disc. They don't. It is a, you got to be careful to navigate there because you... The closest tee pad to the basket you just put it out on might not be your next tee pad. Yeah. Tree kicks galore. Oh, nature appreciation moment. Nice snake skin. Lots of standstill putter throws today, at least in the woods on this first half of the course. Sweet layup. Hole 9, par 4, 509 feet. What a cool hole. I messed it up. <clears throat> but... I could just stand on this tee pad and throw shots all day. I mean, it's like this perfect little downhill funnel. Nice rip. Down towards the, the edge of the circle. So it's over my right shoulder, kind of in that. See how where the road kind of goes over the edge of the hill? The basket's about pin high with that. So that's actually a really great throw. I'm down here in no man's land, having to try and warm up a turbo putt. It's like a wounded duck, but it's up there. Yeah, Justin played this hole dang near perfect. Didn't have to manufacture anything. And now we're on to hole 10. It's one thing I really like about this course. I always like courses that do this, where hole 10 and hole 1 are both by the parking lot. Uh, but anyways, par 4, 464 feet, tunnel shot. The lake is low right now, but I guess if you really threw something bad off to the left, you could maybe find water. Instinct. Getting a little lucky on the end there. I made it to the corner, though. This is pretty much where you want to be to, like, I can see the basket. Overturned that a little bit, but getting to the corner makes this hole a lot more attackable. Especially if you throw a good upshot and don't leave yourself with an edge of circle putt. But yeah, I love courses that hole 10 is right by the parking lot so that you can refill on water or whatever. Drop off a jacket. But hole 11, par 4, uphill. You want to stay right as long as possible because it does kink to the left I can get something from there I didn't have the best round at vets the other night Dang, see this is the fairway like, nine or seven or nine. like a lot of the other fairways you know like there's a defined fairway but no, off of it is solo. I mean there's no underbrush really which is nice I I there's definitely some throws that I miss the gap but like keep flying because there's a lot of open air space. Yes, this is where my tee shot ended up. I'm going Captain's Raptor here, yeah, and it's just a little too stable. I, I needed the flare skip to get around that corner, but it hooked up early. I'm just gonna try and make and now like a I'm really behind the choke point. Through the trees. And I'm gonna try and float a P1 through this wall of trees here. I landed right under the basket and then scooted scooted past but yeah that's what you're working with if you end up to the left like I did you'd rather be straight or right out of the woods onto hole 12 par 4 650 feet just ripping that wave out here I'm loving that disc today unless you throw it like 400 feet to the left there's so much room there's really the not a bad place to be like off the tee here, you're just on this big like wide open spillway. Place. It's nice and flat. Yeah, did. Yes, yeah, so you can see the lake over there. That's whole 16s tee pad, I believe. Um, so yeah, if you really shanked one, you can find yourself 
in the lake, but it'd be just horrific. So yeah, here's what it looks like. How's it going? Coming in towards the green, so you can't see the basket until you're pretty much on it. Like from here, you can't see the basket. There is like a pole coming off the basket. I wish they'd put a flag on it again. But I'm trying to land it just short of that berm and play the skip. Unfortunately, I land on top of the berm and skip off the backside. But I have a backstop for the putt now, which is nice. Because that same putt coming the other way is scary. Uh, Hole 13, par 3, 342 feet. You're throwing across this little valley here. Yeah, the basket is exactly level with you, I think. Death putt. On the edge of the dam. There's about a 10 to 15 foot wide little, like, service road. It's on there, but you can see from this camera angle, these dams are steep. These next few holes, the rollaway risk, and just the amount of elevation you're having to throw up and down is no joke. Which is why I laid that up, because I didn't want to have to walk back down that hill and then put back up it. But uh, hole 14, par 3, 400 feet, but it definitely plays longer than that, because it is way up there. I'm just trying to oh, match... <laughs> the hill stoked to not have a roll away I've seen it happen where disc just comes in at the wrong angle and then rolls you know 100 150 feet down this hill and you got about 15 feet up there and then it slopes down to the water so lots of danger to be had in these open holes and we're lucky that the wind is almost non-existent today when we're playing because this hole, 573 foot par 4, is brutal in the wind. So I'm actually throwing down the road and then playing the flip on this wraith and just hoping it runs out of steam before it finds the water. Oh, if you lean on top. It does. Justin's going Z nuke here. Super wide. But it's a nuke. <laughs> Just comes back. Uh. And then that basket. There's just a roll away risk. There's not really water in, totally in play. I don't know what happened here. But yeah, just a really part, pretty part of the property. Really excellent use of this type of terrain, I think. Makes it really interesting, even though it's just wide open. But again, uphill putts, making you use your legs. So if you look at the trees, across the water here, that gap, that's what we're throwing through. Yeah, the camera's gonna zoom in on it. That's what we're throwing to on the next hole. It's a little bit skewed, like from the tee, you can't quite see that gap, but you're hyzering into that gap for 16th fairway. And the one of the Rovix. Yeah, hole 16, par four, 509 feet. You are throwing over the water, but it's not really in play. Calvin Destroyer here, just getting it as far as I can, and no one is going to crash to the left. Got a new Swedish FD3 here. Things are beefy. But even that's fine. The tee pad's over there. This is the gap you want to throw through. There's where my Calvin landed. In the basket. Ah, it's way back in there. Just a little too low. 
just focusing on hitting the gap. Still kind of out of position. I had to putt with a zone to get the swing on it. But tough, tough hole. Hole 17, par 3, 359 feet. Uphill the whole way. And it bends left to right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I was off the fairway. And that free tail just kept finding gaps. Fairway to make. Nice upshot from Justin there. Just laying it up, taking my three. Hole 18, par three, 314 feet. One of the more wooded holes on the course. Yeah, barely missed that tree. Get a little flip on the envy. The basket's just dead straight. It's right there, but man, there's a lot to miss. Drops downhill, and you got a nice patch of bushes on the left, which is where mine is. Across a little footbridge, and there's the basket up on the screen. So, yeah, I'm on right side of the screen, just trying to give myself a putt because it's a pretty guarded green when you're not lined up with the gap. Take that. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Definitely go check out Pecan Grove up in Sherman. We'll see you out there.